and then there were two. Welcome back to Angels of Scaly Wings. So, the stakes have just gone much, much higher. But we can't really do anything about it. All we can do is wait. Wait for any more information to come out of Reza. And then kill him. Maybe not kill him. I don't want to do it, though. He's a bit of a dick. Let's go talk to Odin. Because I only have two options left, so... Oh. Odin is where we, uh... Originally met the, uh, what was it called? The administrator, I think? <laughs> this should be the right address. I'm coming! Oh, it's you! I was expecting someone else. You're a little early. Yeah, I didn't know how long it would take to me to get here. Better early than late, right? Little dragon! <laughs> little cute little dragon and who might that be this is Emily she she's one of the kids I work with <laughs> the fucking camera panning down <laughs> hello Emily say hi Emily hello I just have to bring her back to the orphanage real quick feel free to make yourself at home in the meantime okay sure you met Emily Okay. So this is where you live, Dean. Small but cozy. My back. That was quick. Being able to fly does have its perks, you know. Wait, you flew her back? Well, I am a delivery flyer. She doesn't get scared or anything? Not at all. She's such a brave little girl. So what exactly is that you do with the orphanage? I'm a volunteer. I help them out with whatever they need, and sometimes take care of the kids. They only have so many social workers. The ratio is about one social worker for every ten children, so it's good for the kids to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with someone they know. I guess you could almost call it babysitting, but for the kids, we basically become foster parents. The older they get, the less likely they are to be adopted. She might be too old to be considered soon. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, I know. I'm worried about what will happen to her if she doesn't find a family. We will still take care of her, of course, but it's not quite the same as having parents. I'd adopt her myself, but I don't think I could care for her properly. Not as a single parent with my packed work schedule. I still volunteer as often as I can, but if I don't, who will? Someone needs to be there for those kids. Uh, that's very nice of you. Thanks, but for me, it's not about being nice. I almost feel obligated to help, you know? Anyway, let's talk about something less depressing. Like what? Let me think. Oh, I just remembered that someone died here recently. Yeah. In your apartment? Not, no, not here, silly. It was close, though. Barely a block from there. Right, the murder of the maintenance guy. I remember that. Wait, it was a murder? I didn't know that. I thought it was just an accident or something. That's terrible. Sorry for mentioning it. Finding the first victim was already bad enough for me. And I have to he hear there was another murder in town? I wish I could get some good news for once. <laughs> Don't just focus on the bad things. It's no use lamenting something you can't change. Sorry, Kaiser. I, I guess I should be more positive. It's just not always easy, you know? Maybe you'll get some good news soon. I hope so. It reminds me. I've got something I wanted to try on you. Try on me? It's nothing too dramatic. I read this magazine the other day and found a few interesting articles. Using her partial hand, she held the magazine up to show me its cover. A rather bold-looking female was presented on the front, adorned with trinkets like rings and jewels. Various headlines gave me an idea of the context within. It reminded me a lot of the typical gossip magazines back home. Lifestyle. The magazine for modern people. This issue even came with a sort of fortune cards. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what to expect. Isn't that the whole fun of it? What should we look at first? Hmm. You decide. Alright, let's see. Here, this article talks about dreams and what they mean. Have you had any strange or recurring dreams lately? Hmm. Uh, eh, my dreams are usually nonsense. Well, according to this article, that means you're a really creative person. Good to know. What about your dreams? It kind of feels like they're different every night. Most of them are nonsense, but sometimes I dream of people I used to know. What do you make of all this? 
I don't know. You're the one with the magazine. <laughs> Even the article concludes that scientists haven't figured out exactly why we dream. It's a big mystery. Alright, let's move on. Oh, I thought you meant moving on from the magazine. Don't be such a sourpuss. There's some interesting stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, the dream stuff wasn't so bad. See, I told you this is going to be fun. What's next? A personality test. Didn't you always want to know what kind of relationship would suit you? Uh. <laughs> the game really wants to th me to throw it in the trash can. <laughs> uh. I already know what I want in a relationship. In that case, we'll find out uh, about what you think of yourself is true. Okay, first question. In a relationship, what role do you take? Hmm. I like to switch it up. Variety of the spice of life, right? Moving on to the next question. Wait, aren't you going to answer the questions too? I'll take the test after you. I don't want to keep track of both our scores at once. Alright. Question number two. What is your favorite dessert? Ooh. Red hot chili cookies? I've never heard of that something like that before. I mean, I have all these. Chocolate cream. Oh, fucking hell. I can feel my arteries clogging just thinking about it. <laughs> An all-time classic. Who doesn't like chocolate cake? Here's the next question. What is your dream job? Uh... <laughs> I'm being a stay-at-home parent does sound quite fucking nice, actually. And I would be able to, like, help influence, like, a child better than if I were to be, like, out working all the time. I'm with you on that one. But does that really qualify as a job? Are you questioning the Almighty Magazine? <laughs> Forget I said anything. How many more questions are there? That's all of them. Now let's look up the results. Oh, it says here the results are outlined in the weight loss booklet that came with the magazine. But I already threw that away. <laughs> uh, what a shame. Yeah, I really wanted to know. But now we get the best part, the fortune cards. Mm -mm. That's what I was looking forward to. <laughs> Me too. How's this supposed to work anyway? I mean, they're just cards. How can they predict the future? Apparently, there are different schools of thought regarding the use of fortune telling cards. The cards just also know anything. They're just a tool. So the information actually comes from somewhere else. But where, though? Well, one interpretation is that our subconscious who gives us the answers that we seek Similar to how dreams can be interpreted, the interpretation of the cards is very dependent on the person itself, and the symbols they recognize in the card's images. We recognize images that are relevant to our lives, and that gives us an idea about ourselves and our current problems. However, this is the most grounded interpretation out there. People usually associate something more paranormal with fortune cards. One of these explanations is the cards are a way to communicate with a higher being, a paranormal entity that knows more than we can, uh, and give us subtle nudges using the cards. And who would that be? The explanations range from ghosts to angelic beings. One even involved humans. Really? Yeah. People would say you could communicate with humans this way. And then there was also something they called higher self. Higher self? How come you know so much about this? Because I read the article about it. Eh. Okay. What should I draw for you? Why don't I get to be the one who's reading the fortunes? Because I paid for this magazine, so the cards are mine. <laughs> okay. So what are my options? I could read your past, present, or future. What's it going to be? Well, I don't really care about the present too much. The past could be interesting to get like, some backstory, but I feel like this is going to be a lot of nonsense. And the future could also be interesting. This is maybe like a sort of hint to the ending that I'm going to get. Because if it says, like, horrible shit, I would not be surprised <laughs> with how many people have died. The prediction of the future is what most people associate with these readings. However, their purpose is to be is to prepare the person in question for a possible future rather than just predicting it. <laughs> oh my. Oh no. What is it? The card we've drawn associate with drastic measures, particularly those with a final conclusion. I'm gonna get a bad ending, aren't I? Oh no. <laughs> or I might have to kill Reza, that might be what the card means. This can be t interpreted in many ways, but it can refer to death, the ultimate conclusion. It can also mean many other things, like a violent outcome of a brewing conflict, or a possible resolution 
of a long-running conflict. What do you think? I very much think I know what this refers to. <laughs> really? How do you already know about the future? Let's just say I have a hunch. It mentions resolutions of conflict that have been brewing, and there's definitely stuff brewing. I guess it's everything the magazine has to offer. That was surely interesting. I guess that means you had fun then. Sure, let's call all that. So you have anything interesting going on at the moment? I can't imagine what ambassador life is like. It's been busy. I thought this whole thing would go by quickly and without any mishaps, but now it seems like there's always something happening. Oh, really? Yeah, I figured I'd come here, do the exchange, and leave again, but apparently it's not that easy. It never is. You speak like you've had experience as an ambassador. Well, no, but doing deliveries is similar. People order something, I fly to them, we exchange a product for payment, and then I go back. It's basically the same thing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but things always go wrong. For example, imagine you have two deliveries to make, and the first one goes smoothly, okay? I'm imagining it very hard right now. <laughs> Alright, so you get to the destination of the second delivery, and they actually check what you're handing them. It turns out that you mixed the orders, but you already delivered the first one. Yeah, that's not a pleasant situation to be in. Now you have to go back to the first family you delivered to, who by now have probably noticed that they got the wrong delivery, and exchange what you gave them for what they actually ordered. Right. But it turns out, they didn't mind the mix-up. As a matter of fact, they have already started eating what they got instead. It's not so bad that they aren't angry, but now you can't exchange the orders anymore, so you have to fly back to the restaurant and get the second order remade. Happens all the time. <laughs> as a result, the people waiting for the second order do get angry, because their order has to be remade and delivered all over again. And the plot thickens. They complain and, of course, get their meal comped. <laughs> the restaurant can no longer sell that first order you still have, so the orders for both families are deducted from your paycheck, and you end up eating nothing but ramen all week again, just so you can make rent this month. <laughs> oh, that's funny, but sad. <laughs> that is unfortunate. And that's why you always double-check your orders, because even a small mistake can have consequences reaching farther than you think. Sometimes you just have to learn the hard way. I guess so. Anyway, what else have you been up to recently? Do you remember the sun flying competition I told you about? Of course. I assume your participation is given by now? Actually, I'm not so sure about that. I mailed the application earlier today, so hopefully it'll arrive before the deadline? Or maybe I should just fly it over myself while <laughs> showing off a few moves, that is. You should fly over anyways to make sure you get in. It would be a shame if you couldn't enter because of a technicality. Yeah, I really should drop by. By the way, could you do me a favor? That depends on the favor, I suppose. It's kind of a long story, but there's something I need. You know some people at the police station, right? Yes. There's only, like, one of them now, but I do know some people. <laughs> oh, shit. I think they're in possession of a map related to an underground building they found. I've heard about it. That's right. Maybe you can get them to hand it over? It doesn't even have to be the real thing. A copy would be just fine. What do you even need it for? Let's just say I'm interested in doing a little investigation of the place myself. What's so special about it? It's supposed to be a remnant of an earlier civilization. Or maybe even something created by humans. You wouldn't be interested in that. <laughs> I can think of a few people. Even if you don't believe in the myths, it's still a fascinating discovery. How do I even ask for something like that? You can always say that humanity is interested in it. Honestly, they probably would be. Could you ask them for me, please? I can try. I won't promise anything, but I could certainly try. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I didn't know you were into archaeology. I wouldn't care as much if it turned out to just be some old building. The whole thing about it being made by humans was really interesting. Why is that? Well, the myths wouldn't be very mythical anymore, if that was the case. We'd have proof. And that's so shortly after finding out that humans are in fact real. Yes, what a time to be alive. So you believe in all that stuff. Belief isn't the right word when you're standing right in front of me. You know, that alone is a miracle. I get excited all over again just thinking about it. Speaking of which, all this excitement made me lose track of time. Oop. Is it that late already? Hmm. Oh, actually, I have a place to be. Especially if I want to make sure my contest application arrives on time. Yes, I should be going then, huh? For now, at least. I certainly wouldn't mind if you stop by again sometime. Will there be any magazines involved? <laughs> actually, that magazine doesn't come out that often. So you wouldn't have anything new from then. I could get a different one if you wanted to, though. Don't bother. <laughs> if you say so. Anyway, I really have to go. I'll see you around. <laughs> Another free day. Yay me. Uh, 
Could I just go meet with the Dean again? I mean, I could. I could just make this whole episode about a Dean. Yeah, let's do it. Screw it. <laughs> Here we are again. Just a minute. I hope I didn't forget anything. You said something about going to the beach? Oh no, are we having a beach party episode? <laughs> yep. Oh, guess who got her entry confirmation for the sunflying competition? Is it me? <laughs> Don't be silly, Kaiser. I've got it right back here in black and white. We're happy to confirm your entry to the annual sunflying competition. Please have your competitor number ready and show it up at the organization booth at the summer festival by... Well, who cares about the rest? I'm in. That's great. Yeah, but the festival is pretty soon. I'll have to make the most of the time until then to get my skills up to par. I thought you already had years of experience. Yeah, but now I have to practice the best routine I could possibly come up with. Not to mention making sure I can execute it flawlessly when the time comes. Practicing in general is very difficult than practicing for an event like this one. I see. Are you ready to see some sun flying? Sure. Let's go then. Huh. Ooh. We're on a beach. So this is where you usually practice. I practice just about anywhere. But today's a nice day for a beach visit. Water and sand are also good surface to practice complicated maneuvers on, in case you can't make the landing. Makes sense. Well, don't let me hold you up. Oh, I can just start practicing right now. I'm still giddy with excitement from getting that letter earlier. Besides, I wanted to hang it out with you while you were here as well. Sounds good to me. Do you visit the beach often? Not really. Except for practice, that is. It does make for a nice backdrop while I fly, though. I see. Do you ever go to the beach? No. It's not something that was possible for me, at least a couple of years. But it certainly would be interesting. It would be something other people would do. I see. Sunning yourself can be nice sometimes. But I'm not really a fan of going swimming. There's so much more you can do at the beach, though. Like what? You already mentioned sunning. Do you ever get a tan? What's that? I guess that's a no, then. To be fair, you are completely covered in scales, so I imagine you wouldn't be affected. Tanning is a reaction of the skin when it's exposed to sunlight. If humans stay in the sun for a while, our skin can get darker. How strange. And if we are exposed for too long, we can even get called we can even get what's called a sunburn. And what's that? Well, the skin can take a reddish tint, and it can be painful and cause dizziness. So you have to be careful not to stay in the sun for too long. Pretty much. It isn't necessarily true for all of us. Depending on the skin tone, people can be more or less affected by the radiation. I see. That sounds kind of complicated. Does that mean we shouldn't stay here for too long? Eh, don't worry about it. I see. Just let me know if you need to do anything. Sure, we will do. You said you don't like swimming all that much. Why is that? Well, as you can imagine, I prefer the air to the sea, even though we flyers have quite a relationship with the water. What kind of relationship are we talking about? We use it to hunt. I see, so you go fishing, but you can't swim all that well. Pretty much. We can do enough to safely hunt and paddle on the surface, but that's about it. If we actually want to go swimming, it's recommend we wear a life vest. <laughs> Is it that bad? <laughs> our wings are made for flying, not swimming. The movements of muscular are rather different. With some training, we can learn to swim better, but it still wouldn't be really be effective. I see. And besides, who would choose to learn to swim if we already have the air to ourselves? Flying is just your thing, I guess. Pretty much. To me, the sound of beaches are a pretty important thing for humans. I wouldn't say important. Rather, it's a unique way for people to spend time. It was often done as a leisure activity, or a way to spend holiday vacations. That sounds pretty important to me. What else did you do at the beach? Let me think. I got an idea and started looking for something in the sand on the ground. With a bit of digging, I found a flat, smooth stone and showed it to her. Do you have any idea what I'm going to do with this? <laughs> Not really. Let me show you something. I went to the edge of the water, followed closely by Dean. Now watch this. I extended my arm with the best technique I could muster before I threw the stone towards the water. And then it sank instantly. <laughs> uh, spinning in the air, the stone bounced on the water's surface a few times before it sunk into the sea. What was that? Stone skipping. Never heard of it? No, how'd you do that? I could show you. I looked around for another suitable stone, and soon found one near the edge of the water. Let's start with the stone. Ideally, you want one that has a big surface area, but it uh, but is as flat as possible. Got it. This one's also really smooth, which helps too. Okay, so we need smooth, flat stones. Now, the technique is also pretty important. I'm not sure how well this will translate to your anatomy, but I'll just show you how I do it, and we can figure out what you can do. Okay. 
Hold the stone like this, extend your arm and curl it like this. Then, you have to throw it in such a way that it stays relatively stable in the air, but spins as fast as you can make it. I do it like this. I throw the stone once again, showing her how it subse subsequently bounced a few times over the water surface before it sunk into the sea. I'm not sure if I can do that. We'll see. Maybe we can figure something out. Let's look for a stone first. Okay. We both started looking for another appropriate stone. I saw Dean scratching around the sand with one of her feet. She crouched pick the, uh, down to pick something up before she returned to me. Here, what about this one? That should work. See, you already got that part done. Guess so. Okay, Okay. now for the technique. She was holding the stone in the claw at the edge of her wing. I tried to guide her by pulling her wing back like I would an arm, but it became clear to me that it lacked a lot of maneuverability an arm would have. For the throw, you'll want to move your wing forward as fast as you can. And at the very end of the extension, let go of the stone. I'll try. I can see her moving her wing awkwardly. She pushed it forward before releasing the stone, which sunk without bouncing a single time. That didn't work. Yeah, there wasn't really enough spin to it. Let me try again. Alright. I waited a few steps of the water to retrieve the stone she'd thrown only moments ago. Here you go. I'll try something different this time. Feel free. Instead of using her wings, she took the stone into the dexterous claws of one of her feet as she continued to stand on the other leg. Effortlessly, she pulled the leg back before rapidly moving it forward and releasing the stone. It flew in a bit of an upward arc before it bounced off the water surface once, and subsequently sunk into the ocean's waters. Nice? Not bad, huh? I had no idea you could do that with your leg. Actually, our legs are what we mainly use to grab things. It only gets complicated if you're supposed to be moving at the same time, like when I'm waiting in the cafe. Interesting. I suppose for someone who's hunting while flying, that's pretty much a requirement. It is, actually. If I'm at home and eating chips or something, I usually use my feet as well. <laughs> I wish I could do that on my feet. I try to. If I drop something, I try to pick it up with my feet. It works sometimes, but not all the time, and that makes me sad. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, some monkeys actually can. They basically have hands instead of feet. So they have four hands. Yep. That seems like it'd be handy, but I think my wings are better. It does a neat trick, though. So what else can you do at the beach? I don't know. Build sandcastles? I haven't done that in like two decades. I'm trying to imagine what a Dean building a sandcastle would look like. Based on what I uh, knew now, she probably wouldn't be using her wings. You should believe me if I told you we used to have contests for building sandcastles back home. Really? Yeah, people would build huge detailed sh sculptures that would be taller than both of us with just sand. Wow, that sounds hard though. You could try if you like. <laughs> I'm not sure I have the patience for that. To me, it seems a bit of a shame to build big, elaborate sculptures out of something like sand that clearly won't last. I mean, if you're going to spend so much time on it, why not create something that will stay? I agree. All that effort only be swept away by the tide or worn down by the weather. Seems wasteful. It's kind of sad if you think about it. I guess we won't be building any sandcastles then. I'm in the mood for a snack. Should I get something for you as well? Uh, yes, please. Alright. You can watch me if you like. Maybe you can learn a thing or two from it. You want to teach me how to fish? <laughs> sure, since you taught me the... What was it called again? Stone skipping. Right, since you taught me the stone skipping, I can show you how to fish. Okay. We actually have two different ways of doing it. There's hunting and angling. Personally, I prefer hunting, though. I can see why. Let me demonstrate. She took a few steps back, then started running towards the edge of the sea, rapidly flapping her wings. She jumped into the air at the last second, taking off and flying around the area. I can see her starting t uh, uh, staring at the sea intently, circling a few times while descending towards the water surface. Claws extended. When she got close enough, her claws suddenly sunk into the water, only to reappear with a fish in her grasp. Afterwards, she returned and landed near me. Oh, sh she put the goggles on! These goggles are cute. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, but I think my distinct lack of wings would probably prevent me from doing the same thing. You don't have to do the exact same thing. In the end, I'm just grabbing them right out of the sea. You could do that. I'm not sure about that. I bet it's a lot easier with their claws. Fish can be pretty slippery. I guess you have a point. Well, there's still the other method. Angling? Yep, angling. See my tail? She showed me her tail. At its end, there's a fork in it. With a sick shape, size, and color. It reminded me a lot of a banana. <laughs> uh, what about it? This is the bait. She sat down near the edge of the water, letting her tail hang down into it. 
This can take a while sometimes, but there are techniques which can speed up the process. The right about a movement attracts different kinds of fish. That way we can even choose what we're going to get. And that works. Yeah, not all the time, but often enough. Interesting. There even are groups that exchange tips and, for, uh, and such for angling this way. Suddenly, I saw her whip her tail upwards, which caused the fish to be launched towards the beach, where I landed on the ground with an audible thud. There you go. That didn't take too long. You can be very hit or miss. I just got lucky this time. And it's not even the kind of fish I really wanted. I guess that's why you prefer hunting. Yep. And you also don't get the nibble scars in your tail where the fish bite you. I see. Though I suppose angling is also going to be hard for you without a forked tail like we have. Actually, we have fishing rods for that where we come from. What's that? The principle is very similar. Basically, it's a long stick that we hold over the water. A line connected to it as bait and a hook at the end to catch the fish. When the fish bites the hook, we can reel it in, uh, reel the line in, and get the fish to us. So you're using a tool to do a very similar thing. Basically, yes. Sometimes we also fish using nets. Oh, some of us do that as well. Not my kind, but usually it's those who either work for a fishing company or sell seafood at markets. I imagine someone like you doesn't have to buy their fish on the market, though. True, but sometimes it's easier to get them there uh, to get what I want instead of having to come all the way here. I see. Speaking of which, let me get a few more for later. Feel free. Once more, Dean took to the sky to hunt for fish. While it was interesting to watch her for a bit, she kept hunting for a while. I started passing time by collecting some she she shells. She shells, she shells by the seashore. <laughs> Phew, that shall last me for a while. Oh, what are those? She shells? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I didn't mean to say that that time. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, they're for you. For me? What for? Well, you could decorate your apartment with them or something. I see. Maybe I should ask you to clarify this. But does this have any particular significance for humans? Not really. It's just a gift. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Kaiser. All the hunting was a good warm-up. I feel about ready to start with the practice now. Go ahead. I'll watch from here. Actually, now that I'll be part of an official competition, I need a fancy stage name. Do you have something in mind? Not really. Have you got any ideas? Ooh. Custom name? Oh, no. <laughs> this is let me type in whatever the hell I want. Hmm, let me think. How about... Oh my god, I can actually type in whatever the hell I want. Oh my god. Mm, I can type in whatever the hell I want. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> All right. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I could just go back and choose one of the other ones, but that's not as funny. Mm, how about... The... Hmm. Damn it, I don't know, like... What the best way to make this would be? Uh, so many ideas, so little time, because I don't want to just sit here for like 10 minutes thinking of a damn name. I could just keep bantering on, I suppose, but then I'm not thinking of a name as well as I could be. Uh. Let's just go with something simple. Yeah, something simple. And I love the fact that her tail was apparently seemingly shaped like a banana. So... Wait, wait. B-A-N-N-A-N-A. -N -N -A. There we go. Oh, it doesn't fit. Fuck. Oh, shit. It doesn't fit. Fuck. Banana. -an. <laughs> Banana. -an. <laughs> oh, shit. Alright. The name cannot be that long. You know what? Fuck it. Banana. Banana, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds alright. Do you mind if I go with that? Not at all. Banana it is then. Alright, are you ready to see some aerobatics? I certainly hope so. I'll start off with a few easy moves. The stage is yours, banana. <laughs> Thanks. 
effortlessly she took the skies, circling the area a few times before she started to do a few maneuvers. Ooh. It kind of do look like a banana. <laughs> a roll followed by a loop, after which she did another roll. It seemed to be less of a practice routine and more of a warm-up to me. Gradually, her maneuvers got more complicated. I saw circles that got smaller and smaller, a brief nosedive, and multiple loops and rolls one after another. Then she landed and returned to me. What do you think? That was great. You haven't seen the best part yet. What would that be? My very own Adeen special, or rather, Bananas special. <laughs> it's a routine I came up with, and I've been practicing for a while. It's pretty difficult, so I'll probably spend the rest of my time until the competition perfecting it as much as possible. What does it look like? It starts off with a circle near the ground. Then as I ascend, the circles get smaller and smaller. Once I reach the highest point, I come to a nosedive to the middle of all the circles. At the show, I'll use a smoke trail when doing the circle so everyone can actually see me going through the circles I made. That sounds pretty cool. That's not all of it. While nosediving, I'll do a few rolls and just before I hit the ground, I'll pull up again. Lastly, I'll end with a few loops and just go to the next maneuver. It all ends up making a neat shape in the sky with smoke trails. Sounds like you've got it all figured out already. Yeah, now I only have to perfect my execution of it. Don't let me hold you up. Alright, here we go. With determination in her eyes, she took the skies once more. When she reached a certain height, she slowly descended again until she was close to the water's surface. Then she started making her circles slowly ascending as the circles gradually got smaller and smaller. Once her circles became as small as possible, she suddenly turned herself around and went into a nosedive. Her speed quickly increased while she moved towards the water. Then she did a roll, another, followed by a third, dangerously close to the water's surface. She suddenly pulled up, but as she did, one of her feet went below the surface where it apparently caught onto something, causing her to spin out of control. Ugh. I saw her feeble attempt to regain control as she barely managed to steady herself enough to get back to the beach. She made a rough landing, rolling on the ground a few times after colliding with the sand. Adine, are you alright? Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. You looked pretty impressive until the landing. Ow, oh, my wing hurts. Let me take a look. Can you move it? A bit, but it really starts to hurt if I go further than this. This doesn't seem to be broken. Yeah, I guess it's a sprain. It happens all the time. Really? Well, not all the time, but it happens. What about the competition? The injury is going to put a serious damper on my practice schedule, but I'm not giving up anytime soon. I guess practice is over for the day at the very least. Yeah, let's head back. I should have some bandages in the cabinet over there. I'll get them for you. One now. Would you do me the honors? Of course, where should I start? I think it's this joint right here. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let me try to get this right. Mm. Here, that should do it. How does it feel? Much better. Maybe this I can even start practicing again in a day or two. Just be safe. Of course. Well, thanks for the help with the bandage, and sorry about cutting practice short today. I guess you didn't get to see any proper aerobatics after all. It's not a big deal. Your health is more important. Are you going to come to the show? If I can, sure. Alright, you might be busy. I'll have to see if I can make it. I'd love to be at the show, though. I'll contact you later with all the details, and we can figure it out from there. Sounds good. I'll see you next time, then. See you. Aw, oh, poor Dean. <laughs> I also gave her a very unfortunate name. Just calling her Banana. But now we're on to Chapter 5, Conflict. And all we did in Chapter 4, I think, was just talk to a Dean. Or... It was all the, like, stuff that happened before the Administrator, also Chapter 4, I don't remember. Actually, yeah, no, it was, because I didn't end the previous part off on a, uh, on the end of a chapter. Well, that was probably the, like... <laughs> yeah, this is probably the video with the least amount of conflict, because all I did was just talk to Adine the whole time. And that's fine with me. She's cute. I'll see you next time.